up? We're back. So, over at Dad's house. Deer season's finally over, so it's time. We've had the meat soaking in the cooler for a little over a week. What's today, Saturday? Yeah. yeah. So, Dad shot his deer last Thursday. I shot mine Friday. So, this is, we've always cut our own meat, but Dad and I made our own setup so we can do everything at our place now. So, we got the table set up. We spent, I don't know, a month kind of here and there building a walk-in cooler last, or this summer. So, we got the cooler going. We went ahead and we built it with the cool box. So we got the window AC unit. But we kind of built everything on our own. So got the deer. There's the cool bot. Sitting at 37 right now. We got the two black tail. Little box. But it's worked out really awesome so far. We've had had one elk in it during bow season. And it's just super convenient having your own. It's kind of dark in here, but got the rails so we can move everything around. Made our own hooks. Built our own door and everything, but it's been super nice eight by six on the outside so it's like five and a half by seven and a half inside but we're gonna kind of show you how we do our stuff figured a little educational style video we're gonna get these deer cut up today so do a little filming for you show you how to do it see you guys in a bit so what we got going on, Dad's pulling the back straps out of this guy. And for those of you that have never done it, it's very simple. You just follow your knife blade down the backbone of these guys. You just kind of start cutting away. Start at the, be the bottom of the hams if it's hanging. Run your knife down. Then it'll just start flaying off there and you'll follow the ribs. And there's just like a pocket there where you just, the back strap just starts peeling away like you can see. But super easy if anybody's out there looking to start doing stuff on their own. There's almost a shelf in there where it sits around the bone. Just about to go along the ribs here. Like venison? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you gonna? Yeah. Tenny. Ten. You gonna cut Bye. your own meat? Yeah. When you start killing stuff? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm gonna take all of these home. <laughs> you can have some once we get all done. Yeah. Yeah. Is it all clean for our mouths? Yep. So we can eat it. Yeah. Does it have germs on it? Nope. Why? It's the cleanest meat you can get. Yeah, can you touch it? Now it has germs on it. You weren't picking your nose, were you? No. Okay, good. But I was doing some hard work. You were working hard? Yeah. I see you got your working clothes on. Yeah, I was getting dirty with some compost. Were you showing mom how to do it? No, I know how to do it. She knows how to do it. Yeah. Thank you for helping me, you guys. Hey. Tenor. Look at the camera. Say see you later. See you later, alligators. Okay, day two of cutting meat. Just got done taking the family trip to the tree Christmas farm. tree farm. Got those Sunday afternoon. Time to finish her up. Open the car! Damn! So that's all we got left. Three more hindquarters to go. 
scrap bucket. But yeah, almost done. There's the actual whole setup, but I've been running our cooler on 34 to 35 just to try to get a good skin on it. And so far it's been working pretty good. Everything's been super cold when you're cutting it up. Adjust, there it goes. Yeah, we're getting there. Everything's got a nice skin on it. It's tacky, so. We'll check in in a little bit. We're just pretty much pulling stakes and what stakes we can off the hindquarters and then everything else is kind of going to burger. What's up guys? Back over at mom and dad's place. We are getting ready to finish the last step of the process, processing your bucks. So we got both heads in the pot on the propane burner, got fire to it. But kind of walk you through what I do with making Euro mounts is kind of there's a hundred ways to skin a cat, so there's all sorts of different ways that I've seen guys do it, but I've just kind of stuck with what works for me. But throw them in the pot, get it boiling, then bring it back down to a hard simmer, and then throw a little Dawn dish soap in there to help with degreasing the skulls and help them clean up a little bit better, but boil it for about half hour or so and then I pull them out then we got the pressure washer over there and you clean them up with that but remember be careful because when you heat them up they tend to get brittle the only part you really got to worry about is the nose and then I'll show you I like to throw a little electrical tape on the bases just for when you're pressure washing if you get too close with that you'll start knocking the color off of them and that's just one more thing you got to fix but boil them, hit them with the pressure washer and get them cleaned up. Then after the first boil, it kind of softens up usually enough where I'll take a Phillips screwdriver and stick it in the eardrum and bust that out. And usually I have to grab it with a pair of pliers and yard it out the rest of the way. Then after that, get as much as you can then throw them back in the water, get some fresh water in there, more soap, and then boil them again. Usually with deer, two boils seem to be good enough to get them all cleaned up. Elk, it's taken me a little bit more in the past, but yeah, that's the process. We're getting that going. Got some other projects to get working on around the house today. So in the meantime, boiling, we will do those and we'll check back in. Just got all cleaned up. We got boiled twice and everything pretty much picked off for the most part, so. I usually let them dry overnight or so, then I go back over them with the knife and scrape whatever got left on there off before I paint them up with the whitening stuff. So, but got them cleaned up pretty good. There's mine and there's dad's right there. But I'll finish videoing up the rest of the process probably tomorrow but got her done for tonight got everything cleaned up so we will see you tomorrow what's up back with an update <clears throat> i got one whitening done on these guys but i did that last night so i'm going to do one more that didn't quite turn out as bright as I wanted to. So, show you guys what I got going on. Got two skulls on the counter. I just took a garbage bag and tin foil to kind of contain the mess because you don't want to get this all over you. So, I bleached my fingers out. But, so what I use is a salon care volume 40 you got to go to like a hair product store to get it then mix it up with hydrogen peroxide 
but I'll get that stuff mixed up and then I'll show you how I do it. So the stuff's pretty cheap. It's like, I think I paid five bucks for this bottle. So don't worry too much about going too crazy with it. And I don't know what the exact science is, but the stuff's pretty heavy. So when I mix it, I just, throw the peroxide in there to kind of not have it as sticky give it a little bit more runny consistency I need a spoon also don't recommend using all of your nice fine china for this sorry if this isn't really level I got you guys in the kitchen cupboard but I'll move this I'll show you guys what I got going on. Hold on, it's about to get bumpy. <laughs> so I'm gonna do one at a time so I don't make a mess like I did yesterday. But you basically just take it. The first round, I got crazy with it and I poured in the nose and everything. But I got that. I just want to get the top of the skull cap a little bit wider. So really the only thing you got to worry about when you're doing this is just be careful around the base of the horns. Because those will bleach out if you get this stuff on there and let it set. So just try not to get it on your horns or anything else you don't want, like your fingers. But just try to get a good even coat all over everything. It's kind of a pain in the butt because it does like to run off. But just do your best. All right, guys. So. There's the finished product. Got them all covered up. But like I was saying, just try to get a nice even coat all over everything, but avoid the hands and your fingers. And it's probably best not to do it on the kitchen counter unless you live alone like I do, because your wife or girlfriend might get kind of pissed. So, one of the perks, you single guys out there, but it is the holiday season, so I'm going to get busy wrapping presents and then we'll end up with a finished product kind of like that guy. 